Hey! Hey! How are you doing? Not bad. Okay, let's start. Wow. We're a small committee, that's good. But is that, is that the okay. presentation? Yeah, the problem is that uh, my laptop crashed. Uh, I got spell letter that I haven't had the time to uh, set it up. It has password, but I don't get it at all. Uh, so I don't really need slides. I have few notes, so just to keep track uh, of my talk. But it was supposed to kickstart the t a discussion about our packaging tooling to include patch management because it's a recurring issue. And uh, well, we'll see. Well, well, so my name is Eichel, uh, so I'm part of the FESCO and also Cloud Working Group and in my day job I work at Red Hat on OpenStack, so I'm the RDO guy, basically. What about we move hmm? the Yeah, it's, it's just notes, so I can, okay. share, I can share it later because it's kind of rough. Uh, my laptop broke on Sunday and couldn't finish them. It's just that I don't get lost. So, so I've been a packager for 10 years. So I've seen all the different practices and also the bad practices. And uh, we are currently in a source state for patch management in packages. So first, Federal policy is about upstream first. So we're not supposed to ship patches in our packaging. At least that's the default, no yeah. patches. But some patches are not upstreamable, like some specific federal integration, or there are also patches that are refused upstream that, uh, that otherwise federal co it couldn't, uh, the package couldn't work on federal, so we have to, to p bring these patches in our packaging. Uh, we can't avoid patches in uh, some package because there are security issues or backports that are mis required because we can't wait upstream to release a new table to do a new package. So we have to backport the patch and keep it in, in the package until we update to the latest uh, to the latest release. But so we don't have a choice. We have to deal with patches. And that includes many critical patches like uh, GLBC, kernel, Firefox, many critical path packaging package in Fedora have patches. And we have to manage them sanely. And uh, mostly it's interesting to see that this these are the packages who started experimenting things but in how we manage patch. If you see how the kernel manage their patches, that's quite interesting because they finally have a working workflow, but the problem is that their workflow, which is pretty much same, is not is not adapted. You know, is not implemented in our tooling, and is not also documented. by uh, so other packages could reuse it. So, I think that as part of uh, the packaging, um, uh, as part of the technical community, we should fix that and uh, and say to the packager, okay, you have to manage patch. Here, here are the tools, here are the good practices. Well, we're not do going to tell you how to do it, but if you do it that way, that's the best way and the most sane way, and that encourage contribution. So, I will come to that uh, at some point. So, currently the patches are version in this get. So, they are version as sources, so you can't, track the changes in your, your the patches. Uh, in the spec, you declare them with a patch followed by a number line. So you have to insert the line each time you had a patch. And you apply them with a special macro, which person patch, number patch, and then apply it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of very rough, because you have to do it manually. Uh, every time, if you are managing packages with a lot of patch, it could be very cumbersome. Uh, currently, I'm maintaining, I'm co-maintaining most of the OpenStack packaging, and we have a lot of patches in some cases. And every time we have to roll out a new release, we have to rebase the patches, 
sometimes we you have to new had new patches, remove patches, and we have to do it. We had to do it manually. It is really annoying. So we decided, hey, OpenStack patches are managed by Git, and that's how I do the transition. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna even stop. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, the projector shot. Yeah, but the projector is not used. So oh, you're not okay. So uh, yeah. Uh, so we ha there is also a problem in how we generate patches. Uh, the very old way was to use diff. So we even had a uh, few options where that were recommends and a u r for generating uh, patches. But most people ignore that. So you get you get to apply patches on top most directory or inside a directory that was a total mess. Uh, the newer practice is to leverage Git. Okay, if your project is not managed by Git, just unpack the table, uh, create a temporary repository, change things, and generate the patch. And next time you have to do it, you just import the patch and fix it. So that's the way how we are, what is recommended now to do patches. <coughs> Some projects like Docker maintain their own Git repository and manage their patches on their Git repository. So that's available publicly. But the problem is that we can, that they're managing that in their own repository and nobody, may, not everyone knows where it is and it could change from a package to another. So, so we, we need to find a consistent guidelines to say, okay, you want to manage your sources at side, we'll have the infrastructure. We are currently building a tool called Pagur, which is kind of GitHub-like clone, for both for Fedora, but we be, which would be reusable by anyone. What's your policy? Pagur. How do you spell that? P-A-G-U-R-E. Yeah, exactly. P-A-G-U-R-E dot I-O, I think is where our canonical implementation is. Exactly. Uh, no, that's fine. We're a small community. We're okay. here to speak together. That's not me speaking <laughs> to you and you listening. If you want to interrupt me, feel fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we're here to discuss yeah. an exchange. -E. So, so we have the tool. We have. We are having the basic infrastructure to host Git repository. Mm -hmm. So. We just need to tell people that they should move to this pace. That should be a guideline saying you want to manage so. So people could say that. We have even a pull request mechanism. So that would be awesome because we'd be able to encourage people managing their patches to collaborate together in the same repository. And maybe one day on the spec file. You have the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That would be the the, uh, the awesome ending of uh, all this. Yes. All <laughs> this, all of this. But, yes. but so we have the tooling. Uh, the only part that is missing is the packaging tooling, like Fed package that doesn't allow you to manage properly the patches. Um, and uh, that's here I. That's here I will be um, saying that. The problem with all that, the current approaches is that it's fragile because you have to sync spec manually. Uh, the collaboration is not smooth because you have to search where are patches or if there is actually a repository to manage patches. Uh, there is no way to track patches because, for instance, you cherry pick a patch from upstream, but you don't know if uh, when you release a new a new a new package you don't know if uh, your pa the patches you're using have been taken because maybe you had to change things and so the checks and change and you have no way to check that you are already shipping that patch so which is stupid because git has way to to tell to track patches if you do cherrypick da dash x it will include the original checksum. So you, the tooling would be able, okay, the original section is it, oh, this is already in here, so I will drop this patch automatically and you ha don't have to care. Just free text in there. Yeah, exactly. But it's still, I thought. 
So now to make things more smoother, uh, we can already drop the clutter in the spec because we have this cool macro called percent auto setup, which will be applying patches automatically for you. So you don't have to worry in adding and removing the percent patch lines. That's not used anymore. Uh, by default, it uses pa the patch utility to apply patches, but there is a switch which is dash the uh, uppercase ace get, which will allow to use get directly to apply patches. So, if or we had some kind of tooling in that package that allow you to insert patch lines for you, you just and if you're using auto setup, you don't right. you don't have to care and you don't have to do a lot of parsing to have this because patches are and source lines are pretty much commonly in the beginning of the spec and don't move much. So that would be oh great. No, we could helpful. We could prescribe that yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and m the most awesome is that it's supported in RPM 4.11. So all supported Fedora mm -hmm. already have it. And you know, seven. Seven, yeah, exactly. Uh, people said it wasn't working, but I I tried personally and it works pretty much fine. Yeah, it's worked for me. Yeah, the only thing is that you still have to have build requires Git because it's not in the build route for EL7. But it works pretty much fine and it's, and I, m I think that if the only blocker for people is that, oh, I must have the build requires Git, well, we can manage to have it in the build default build route because Git is pretty much pervasive uh, nowadays, so. So by leveraging already RPM feature, we reduce the clutter. Um, now we have to use Git as we already suggested because a lot of upstream projects already use Git. So why n using something else? And this is also the default STM of Fedora, actually. So if it doesn't, you can, uh, if it uses another STM, you can sync it. Uh, you can sync uh, SVN and Mercurial repository to Git very easily. It works fine. So le we could have some kind of syncing repo between Pagur and the upstream repo to keep uh, that in sync. Uh, if you don't, well, we could, I know that Debian has a way to version sources. It takes Starball and it will add them to, uh, to, Git, to Git repository and you can manage your patch on top of that. So we could reuse that, uh, the same approach. So nothing is actually preventing us to do it. We can already implement it in local way, but if we want to implement it at federal level, we already have the base tool doing it. So you just have to do the glue and make it happen. So life would be much easier if we do that because we automatically rebase patches. We do really if we ch do cherry pick dash x, it will be we will drop patches automatically as long as soon as they are included upstream. So why why we not doing the it already? <laughs> uh, the good thing is that I've been experimenting that workflow for one year. Uh, RDO already does that. We have some specific tooling that is called RDO packaging, which could be used for Fedora package actually because it's a, a tool built upon Fed package and Koji. What was the tool called? I'm sorry. RDO package. RDO. RDO. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we are already experimenting in on other projects. That people are already using it to manage their packaging, and. So the, this approach works. We have tried it and it's pretty much reliable. The problem is that RDO is a very specific tool and I prefer that we include the patch management part in Fed package because it would be much more useful to more people. So the idea is that we need to agree that this is how we want to encourage people how to manage patch that's why I'm here speaking, because I could just send patch to Fed package and do it. But the problem is that, well, but you're forcing something on us and... 
Mm. But yeah, there's a cultural, a cultural problem. problem. So you have to convince people that, are, do we agree that's, uh, that's the preferred way to manage pages? Okay. So if we agree, let's implement it in our tooling, in the our infrastructure, and then advertise it. Yeah. Don't make it mandatory, just make it yeah. available. Yeah. Exactly. I don't want to force, because if people have working way, Okay, I'm well, fine. A lot of packages, but, like one or two. But yeah. yeah, but for instance, I'm proven packager, and I don't want to spend a lot of time checking how people manage their package. If they have a very standard way, that would make my work much more useful to fix packaging and help people. Because that's why we're here, proven packager. We're here to help people fixing their package. Okay, you don't have time to fix that, or you can fix it. I will fix it for you. But I'm not doing the maintenance. I'm just here to help. So, if we want people to help, make it easy. Don't uh, don't have them reading a lot of documentation or spending mm -hmm. time searching things. Right. Make it, so. Oh, you're managing patch the standard way. Okay, I know how to do it. I know will I, when I will find things. Oh, maybe that package will help me to clone your patch repository and will be able to update it myself without breaking anything because the pro the process is already documented and. Straight, straight forward. So that's the goal. So, okay, uh, the main notes are ending here. So, at this point, uh, now I would be, uh, I would have wanted to have some of the air package people here, but uh, apparently nobody uh, from the tooling group is here. But that's not a problem. I will do the interface. So I think we should now we. We should see if we have to change anything in that policy that I'm suggesting, because I plan to suggest uh, to uh, to propose it to the FESCO at some point and have it implemented. So I wanted to have feedback. What do you think need to be changed or added? So I have a general question because you say that we should hmm? have keep the system always at the table and yeah. then build the packets on top. Yeah. Why not simply get rid of the table? That could be a way. Put the git of the source project. Because mm -hmm. 90% of projects, of packages, are packaged in core generation mm -hmm. well, well, And you yeah. take this step back, uh, are you yeah. packaging all the Ruby gems? Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK. <laughs> OK, so, 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 okay, so, so let's, say, let's, just, let's say a large cluster. OK, OK. Yes, I, I agree. I, well, I think that any solution is not going to be applicable to all kinds of packages. No. But uh, just for the moment, for, since we are recording, I will yeah. just uh, outline the discussion. A uh, lot of upstream projects are using Git, so why not directly using Git and just all the checksum right. to to generate the package from that instead of using the tables? Right. Now, can I save you a little bit of time? Um, because this is a discussion. That's, this is the third or fourth time I've been part of this discussion. Um, and in case you, I'm mm -hmm. on FBC, I'm yeah. to this, so. Um, we've been through this, but we've not been through this in the new get dominated world that we seem to be in now. Mm -hmm. The main issue that we have always had is reproducible builds that are managed from, that, that can be completely done without external access to anybody else's repository. Now, with Git, we can obviously now clone a repository from whatever yeah. upstream has and use that and have, you know, yeah. the, the checksums so that we can ensure that we've got it right. So now may be the time to consider that again, but again, yeah. you're talking about a big cultural issue and you're talking about a pretty big overhaul in the way our infrastructure works. Yeah, because actually the packaging are extracting tarballs from the Lucas hat catch right. and it doesn't manage git at all. Yes. The, but the tarballs just come from a separate mm. easy to you know storage repository within Fedora. There's nothing technically preventing us from mm -hmm. getting the source some mm -hmm. other way besides somebody has to write the tooling. Mm -hmm. um, and you're right. Now in in this universe right now we it's it's a good idea. But the last few times it's been brought up, it was not necessarily a good idea because we, you know, we just don't see the S. I so think I think that uh, I agree that's a great idea. But I mm -hmm. think if you want to maximize your success, 
it should be a separate proposal because yes. it doesn't because if something in the if you bundle a lot of proposal it, it must it, only if there is yes. a small thing that is preventing the whole proposal to move forward yours will be stuck yes. so propose it separately and i oh, and if it, if it happens in fesco hand believe me i would be uh, approve it because this is the right time to consider this we have the tooling to clone repository and solve them independently because the problem is that well, people were using SourceForge and now SourceForge is closing a lot of repository. Yeah. Well, so, the and, and this is horrible because now we lost a lot of history and, and by using the Lucasite catch with tables, we are pre preventing some, some such issues to come. But now we ha can clone Git repository and store it sand. That's a good time. And as if you want to push that, you, uh, I'm pretty sure that now people will consider it, and there are people, including me, will, which will be pushing this forward. Really. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to try to yeah. Great thing, and um, that's uh, also in everything. That's nice to see. To yeah. Oh, I just wanted to, something loosely related to that that's come up in Project Atomic and OS three mm -hmm. and RPM OS three and everything. Have you, have you heard of GNOME Continuous? Yeah. Right. So they basically for a subset of the packages they do what you're talking about they don't build them, they don't build them into packages at all they build directly from source but anything that does what you're advocating and makes it easier to constantly keep up with what's going in source also makes yeah. testing in QA that much better it removes a huge roadblock which is another thing to add you know if you are looking for ammunition to advocate for that that's a big one is if you can make it easier and Debian essentially already yeah. does they went through an evolution this is my understanding, and mm -hmm. through an evolution of the way their packages mm -hmm. have always been, a, a spec file is just a make file, mm -hmm. and there have been a variety of competing mechanisms for optimizing that make file. And the one that is currently most popular now for something like 50% of packages, it, the spec file, the make file, is just mm -hmm. a few macros, and that's it. Because it just yeah. knows it has a few heuristics for pulling yeah, exactly. stuff down from source, and it just builds. And that's, which is, is, that's what we want for the majority of yeah. packaging, because the problem is that it's a lot of error prone and we want to minimize errors because a lot of contributors don't have many times and uh, as, as a package uh, packager sponsor I spend a lot of time explaining things and it's always the same thing so yes. I want really to make it straightforward I want 80% of the things we do should be straightforward and people don't need even to ask because oh I need to use this micro oh and we spend the time on where is the heart of the paging, the if solving ish integration issues or very tricky ones because we don't ha we don't we are very small core of contributors. Uh, if you see Fedora has a lot as thousands of people registered on fast, but in terms of paging, we should have one thousand something like that. And if you downsize to the people who are doing that regularly, yeah. it's less it's less than one, uh, one or two hundreds. S and would want to do is quite optimistic so we want we want we want that the the one um, the occasional packager spend the less time doing his package right the right way so i think that at this point also we have to see what are the tasks to implement that i think that we have to implement the this this uh, thing in our package I'm maybe at Fed package level, but I want it to be reusable by other tools depending on our package, like a Red Hat package or also CentOS package. See, because it's pretty much, it would be pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't see it's very specific to Fedora, but. No, no, well, EL5 and 6 are always yeah. going to be difficult. But 7? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm speaking of future. To me, CentOS 6 is already too old. Yeah, so. Well, me too, but. <laughs> but. But I don't want to make it mandatory, so if people don't use it, it won't bother them, so anyway. But uh, we have this. We also have to see with Pagur how it's going. We need to have some namespaces for packaging and pa managing patches. Uh, actually, the way Android packages work is that it registers three remotes: the origin, or the, which is diskit, uh, the patch, uh, the patch uh, repository, and the origin upstream repository. 
So it fetches all these origins and then it will, it will update the patches uh, uh, against the upstream repository and then it will generate the patches and port them in this in one comment. So it will generate a separate commit and then you, f and then you do your work of patching. Oh, there is a, there is a standardized la change log. You may want to customize it or maybe you want to change some option, but that's packager work. That's not the tool work. Tool right. will be streamlining what could be automated, oh. not the reverse. Also, don't forget the new hotness thing yeah. we have. Oh. That, yeah, the Anitja and the new hot, I'm terrible name, but the new hotness where that's yeah. the thing that yeah. automatically files bugs that there's been a new upstream release yeah. and does builds for you. Yeah. But of course, all it knows how to do is run, you know, yeah, said scratch lines. build. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't know how to rebase patches and stuff, yeah. but it could yeah. make it very interesting. Exactly. Because theoretically, it could commit the stuff on a branch and, and say, your package is ready. You and know, and and merge and branch and, and, and push. You and know? if we had reliable CI, we right. could even imagine in some cases it goes directly to repository. Well, we do sort of. I mean, Cache works. Yeah, but it's, it, to me, well, I'm kind of uh, continuous integration pedantic person. So if, it, if the CI is not comprehensive, I prefer to have some more testing. So, but if we had, if we had that, we could generate package that installs, deploys, and then it could be tested at, uh, against test cases, and it works. Right. Why not go into the repository? Anyway, that's what testing is for, Test testing things. So, so can, can you walk me through, Yeah. So let's say I have package A, mm -hmm. tar, we'll, we'll save that for a different discussion. So I have tarball mm -hmm. and a patch. What, what would be, in your opinion, the proper steps? I think that if you, we would need some kind of convention to tell in this kit that your, your package will be managed through uh, the, the, the gateway, so for, for instance, we could have a file which, uh, which said, set the flag, and we would do fed package new sources, uploading source to local side cache. You'd, you'd, you would be telling, okay, this package is managed by git, so I will upload the table and then automatically untag the table and version it into the uh, source repository. Uh, that's how Debian works, actually. Well, not all group of Debian, but I've been uh, contributed to Debian Science, and most of the packages manage Git and by Git, and most of scientific package have no upstream Git repository. So basically, all you t yeah, you all you're taking is extracting the table right. initially, so you will be creating a repository. The next time, you'll be it will uh, recognize the commit created by the extraction of the table and recognize the patches, and then it will, it will extract the new table, create a new commit, and rebase the patches on top of that. Yeah. So, so if they fail, you have, you have to yeah. fix it okay. yourself. You always have to resolve conflicts, so. Yeah. But but well, when, when it goes up there, it'll tell you these patches fail? Yeah, I think that in first time, it will try it locally, and then upload it, and you, if there are conflicts, you have to solve it by hand. I, I have no problem solving Yeah, yeah, is, the workflow, I, I understand. Oh, I, I got to this step. And yeah, step. But yeah, I, I understand that this kind of workflow being not usual to everyone, we need to discuss it and explain, because even for myself, it was a bit confusing the first time I tried it. Okay, that works that way, okay. But it makes sense after I tried it, so. What's, yeah? So, Git is able to replace patches because it knows the history. Right? Yeah. You can say, well, in this branch, the file may mm -hmm. change, so the patch should, mm -hmm. should have been located here. Mm -hmm. And if you try to do the same with the tarball from here and from here, it will not know from here. It may yeah. be harder for Git. To yeah, but you'd lose the functionality of uh, testing if a patch has been already applied to some sources. But that's the sad thing, but at least you'd, you'd want the way the easy rebasing, and also you'd be able to track the changes of sources. 
you could say, oh, I could generate a diff of the new and old sources. We could add new features if we had Git to manage our sources upstream and then patches. And uh, the well, the problem is that we could do a lot of things, but the tooling actually is not here. But that's, that's how we are here. We are here to think about ahead of what we'll be doing and then implement the tooling to do the things. Uh, for instance, uh, one of the interesting things is that uh, we're having um, the vast, uh, that project called Review Server. And uh, until last year, it was just a project on few slides. There was no code, nothing. Just people saying, oh, okay, the current review process is a bit cumbersome because we use Bugzilla, which is not usable for that. We built a process which is, which is in my own sense, pro workflow wise, pretty sane, but the implementation sucks. So basically, people say, okay, we will be re implementing the, the same workflow, but in a pr an adequate tool which is Fedora Review Server, and then we will ship it. But it didn't exist la last year. And Pierre and, uh, oh, only remember his nickname, uh, sorry, but. Uh, What's his nickname? Yeah, uh, Sokotny, Stanislas. Stanislas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I can't oh, last name. <laughs> yeah, the problem is that I, when I remember his nickname, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, Stanislas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's so cotton. Yeah, it's, it's last yeah, name. It's so yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you see us, Stanislas. Mm. Uh, but uh, it didn't exist uh, last year. But they presented the project, and it actually makes sen made sense. So people started working on it, and we even have a Google Summer of Code working on the review server. Well, it's not quite ready, but it's moving forward, and I hope by next talk. We would be able, we'd either have it in production or at least in staging uh, steps, so people could be able to test it and see if it works. And it would solve so many problems, but we didn't predict it when we ha were last year in that flock. For instance, oh, checking if there are duplicate reviews. Nobody spoke about that ever, but now there is a feature in Fedora Review Server that when you submit a review, it will check if. There is a, yeah. there isn't a review s already suggested proposed right. for this package. And we've been using Bugzilla for that yeah. forever, but it is really not the right tool. Yeah, too slow and it's well, horrible. I mean, even if it was fast, it still wouldn't make any difference. Yeah. It's just the wrong format for that. Yeah. Everybody needs to pile on comments. There mm -hmm. needs to be a Git repository yeah. or something where people can suggest yeah. without me going through and writing the review, writing the package for the guys. Yeah, exactly. Thing. And, m and the more exciting thing is that we would be able to collaborate on reviews. Actually, yes. it's kind of the mentor and the reviewee relation, which is not good because, okay, it's fine for new packager because that's mm -hmm. the way I will learn. But when you have an experienced packager, why not helping him in getting his review right. ready? Because we'd go m so much faster and we'd decrease the queue and we could focus more time on the reviews that need more, p more eyeballs or helping new packagers getting in because I don't want to do the, the work for new packager for a single reason. I want them to learn the hardware. Right. But new, uh, the current packager already, I assume that they already know their stuff so I should be helping them and then get the package ready and that's all. We should, we, we, sometimes I have a review and I have just a nitpick to change. Right. But why since, you know, but yeah. why can't I fix it directly, approve it because the guy would be waiting for a month, okay, nobody's answered, and, yeah. you, and it would be stalled. Be, just because nobody answered it, and if someone could just come in and fix it, oh, oh approve. The other thing is, I, I often have time to do some drive-by. Yeah. You know, I'll go through and it's like, oh, that package is neat, but I need to fix this thing, so, but I'm not gonna spend the time to type up the entire yeah. thing and go through all of this when there's really no point in me doing it. Yeah. Whereas I could just get it that much closer to being done, and at least something would have happened. Yeah, and uh, the problem is that when it's nitpicks, sometimes when I throw the packager, mm -hmm. I just tell him fix it at import yes, time. I do that but all the 
I don't like it because I would prefer it to be fixed because I'm not, if I trust the person, I'm not in, uh, in even in my case, I'm not sure he will do it. Right. But I don't, uh, maybe not have the time to check everyone, but when I trust the person, okay, I yeah. trust you, but sometimes I don't know the person, so I prefer it, him to fix it. And well, if he's in package group, I would assume that if I fix it, it will apply it, so. Yeah, well, on, the, on the flip side, I think when I submit a package and somebody has a nitpick, yeah. uh, I, I like it when they say, okay, fix this, and I have approved it, but please fix mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But they have a nitpick, like spelling. Oh, spelling to and, me and is not blocked. You yeah. say, okay, and I, you submit it in my thing like a day, and then a month goes by, and I'm like, yeah, come on. on. Yeah, I, I mean, you got a nibble, but nobody did. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and then I can't do it. And then I've had a couple where a month goes by, and they, they're like, well, well now you got to put it in the new, new version. Oh, God. Oh, well, yeah. Shoot. <laughs> and I'm sorry. I mean, because uh, honestly, I, I'm responsible for a lot of that, too. Yeah. Because, and, you know, sometimes uh, I'll just go through. I mean, yep. there's a thousand packages in there right now, yeah. and I'll you know I'll ping on all of them, and it'll take three and months. And and the problem is that some people ping you to for reviews. Okay, I, p I okay I will t help you, but w did you make some informal reviews? Okay, start by that. And right. Be because the problem is that okay people don't do do. That's not another topic of this yeah. conversation. Yeah, but sorry. let's keep on. We are between packagers, so. <laughs> but the problem is that. If you want the queue to decrease, help. I say yeah. even informal review help because when you tell explain someone that he's some doing something wrong, it will fix it. And when a peg, uh, someone wants to do the formal review, that's work said later. Mm -hmm. So just do informal reviews. You, yeah, as yeah. long as the package is closer to being done. You don't exactly. If you look at the stats from the keynote, people are just jumping to helper and they're not even bothering. And that. That's, uh, that's that's dangerous because that's the problem we're going to run into. So you're right. If you're going to do this to go a review server, if we're going to make it easier to maintain these things, things in a proper way, yeah, I think that for instance we have this tag called federal federal need sponsor, we should have just yeah. a checkbox. Okay, this guy is not in the package group. He should go the full way. Yes. And the other guy, okay, out of any packager or proven packager to submit the access or at least submit pull requests and work mm -hmm. together. But we need uh, actually to um, simplify the process, not by lowering the quality, but allowing more collaboration. Yes. That's the way. I, I would, yes. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing else to say. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it. It's, it's already gone through like the, the review thing. It's like, here's a check, so I'll look at this. No. Yeah. Well, the other, the other mm -hmm. important thing about all of this is we still have this emphasis on it's your package because you submitted it and you're going to maintain it because all of the work for the review mm -hmm. to getting the package into shape is on one person which is a submitter yeah when but all of a sudden it's supposed to become the community's business as soon as it gets in mm -hmm. even though that rarely happens but yeah. if it was the community's business as soon as it was submitted you don't have to change the culture as soon as somebody clicks mm -hmm. the button and says, okay, now it's a community package. Exactly, yeah. that's, that's even one of the problems of Bugzilla, you can change the reporter, and or yes. SCM script, sometimes check with the reporter, because if you do the CSCM request, but you're not a reporter, mm -hmm. the script will fail. Yeah, so I you have to redo, to open a new ticket. Well, you don't have to, I mean, we can fix it. But yeah, we can fix it, but actually, that's not the priority. So no, no. that's annoying. I just had the case last night. Oh, I I submitted. Oh, so this review starts for two years. Okay, I fix the package. Okay, uh, the process actually is that you close the ticket or request the ticket mm -hmm. to be closed as tall and start a new one. Oh, I'm losing time. Well, but uh, I can't do otherwise because... Well, especially when you have to wait 10 minutes for Bugzilla to answer. And, yeah. I, and I will apologize because I yeah. actually wrote that code that you're complaining mm. about. But no. um, there was there's no... I mean, you can ignore it, but there's no yeah. real easy way to... to yeah. Bugzilla doesn't let you change that. Yeah. It's just really the wrong tool for the job, but... You know. Actually, I understand it as a sanity check because you want to be sure that nobody else is doing this SM right. request, but... S but since we can share the reporter, uh, that's how Bugzilla is made, and it makes sense for uh, 
the tracker. Yes. But for but not this, yes. <laughs> if your tracker, it's completely different. We want to be able to swap the review because, okay, you 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 know you not you don't have time to take to to do the process. Okay, let someone else do it. And anywhere we could add you later as owner or co maintainer. Right. So we don't care who is leading the process right. actually. But. That's the problem. We, we need to fix the tooling and fi find the things. But people, when we advise recurring in general, or every time we speak about improving the process, they just are saying we should drop guidelines, we should allow bundling right, libraries, right. and that's not the right. I can't stand that. It, that's yeah. from an FPC perspective. Everybody yeah. says, well, you should tell people how to do it. And it's like, yeah. but. We can't, I mean, the, the document yep. would be a thousand pages long and you still have questions that come up there and you yeah. have to allow for common sense at some exactly. point. Yeah. And you have to allow for people to disagree. Um, we have to make a choice. Do we want quality or not? So yeah. in, uh, I think that we should improve collaboration and in the few cases where we can do it, for like Chromium, maybe we should have it on the site mm -hmm. as actually and improve integration from third party project. For instance, copper is very lightweight. Maybe we could improve copper to be something that is as good as Koji and the mm -hmm. federal build system and make and say to people, okay, we recommend such repository because we know the people right. maintaining them are are trusted. For instance, the big data SIGA is having issues because they have a lot of bundling libraries and if it had to go through to the world process, right. it would be impossible. But even them agreed that we shouldn't be pushing such package into Fedora, but they have no way to do it on the side and say, okay, we are the Fedora that does the thing. Well, actually, the, uh, I don't know, it's the Fedora, the package for the Hadoop call purpose was just. Yeah, uh, it was, I was proposing them to, uh, uh, until the, until we fix the situation, to, have, to maintain a copper repository mm -hmm. on the side. Because we, the, that's awful. I've been helping the people maintaining Adobe, and they, they're doing an awesome job in unbundling libraries, but it changes every minor releases. Yes. It's impossible. And at some point, either we say, okay, we grant you a white card for a limited set of package, but the problem is that if we start doing that, many people will be asking. So. I don't know. Maybe we. I think that if we are doing that, it should be only on strategic thing. For instance, let's say the council say, okay, we consider big data strategic, so we will let the technical community to define the limited set of package which are allowed or not. Or the other way would be, okay, uh, go on copper. We will advertise our repo as a semi-official repo, but that's not in Fedora. That's on the side, beside Fedora. Because that's the only way. Or, or if we allow to push pack and bun, uh, package with as much bundle and library, we'd be encouraging people to do it. And many people are sneaking already packages with bundle libraries without checking the current exception. Yeah, it's hard to find though. Yeah, the so. The and code search is actually pretty useful. And um, usually what's, what I try, so for instance, is to see, okay, this is the library that are already allowed because like JavaScript, which is hellish for the moment, mm -hmm. the, ma the popular libraries are, have an exception. Most people don't know it, so they don't bother packaging it. So I told them, okay, if you are using such libraries, you can do it, but mention it. Right. But when it's a C li bundled C library, it's very easy to unbundle it, so do it. Okay, it might require some work, but that's still easy compared to Java and I know that with Ruby, you should have a hard time with bundle libraries. Actually, it's gotten well, better. It's gotten a lot better. Uh, yeah. I did run into one the other day. Uh, my team that is working on the OpenShift team, they said, oh, put this into our stuff and Fedora. And I <laughs> put it into our stuff, and then I went, oh, well, yeah. here's this whole There's a whole yeah. vendor. I, I hope that they have a common name where you put it under vendor, and, mm -hmm. yeah. and you know the that's yeah. not the Fedora. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. And, and uh, that's the problem. We need to have consistent guidelines. And no, and the problem is that people on the main list often don't understand that. We, people are not closing the discussion. People yes. 
you just have to find another path to reach your goal because most of the time the goal is agreed by everyone okay we need to 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 simplify reviews but yeah. how you yeah. how that's the problem the work, and, so. and people yeah. when you say no this way they don't understand no at all which is not the case mm -hmm. And uh, I know, for instance, uh, people are frightened of the FPC because they say no, but, well, have you spent time reading logs and understanding the point of view? Because what they're saying is that they need more input for you yeah. from you or, th or well, you fix something. You're talking about the recent, yeah. whatever that Gitware code was that I've forgotten already, but yeah. yeah, it's like somebody says, we want to bundle this. They didn't say why, it's yeah. used by things, okay, but you know, 